Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Medzone African Motives, uh, still on our revisions for Industrial Electronics N3. Uh, this is a uh, condition where we are going to be working with the alternating current uh, theory, which we do understand now it can be a combination of a DC and AC, it can be AC and another topic. But here we are working on the else, uh, on the separate part of the alternating current uh, theory. So we are given uh, 2.1, indicate whether the following statement is true or false. Choose the answer and write only true or false next to the question number 2.1 in the answer book. All right. The inductive reactance of an inductor, we're talking about inductive reactance of an inductor is directly proportional to the frequency. Is it true that these uh, to are directly proportional. That is exactly true. Remember uh, that when you are calculating the inductive reactance, XL is equal to two pi FL. So XL and F, they are directly proportional to each other, all right? So XL is proportional to the frequency and the inductance uh, that is on a condition where we are given uh, a constant, okay? So these two, they are directly proportional, which is true. 2.2, we are given an RLC circuit that is series circuit. So this is RLC series circuit with the resistance, inductance, and the capacitor respectively is connected to a supply voltage and also a frequency. So this is, a uh, remember, we have a resistor, we have an inductor, we have a capacitor, but they are connected in series, in series. All right, so let us just consider uh, the circuit diagram of how we're supposed to have this. That's we have got uh, a resistor, then we also have uh, the inductor, then we also have the capacitor. These three are connected in series to a supply voltage, uh, with a frequency of 50 hertz, all right? So there we are given the supply uh, voltage, which is uh, 220 volts, and the frequency is 50 hertz. So this is what you're given. So take note also the resistance, which is we've got the resistance, the inductor, the capacitor. So the resistance are given 150 ohms, the inductance, of 23 uh, millihenries, the capacitance of 52 microfarad. So this is what you're given. Determine the following 2.1, the inductive reactance. Inductive reactance. So in case of these formulas, you've forgotten what is the, guys, this part of your formula sheet is the alternating current, all this part is the part of the alternating current, all these formulas. We have got uh, the formula for XL, or XL is given as two pi FL. So we need the inductive, which is XL, the inductive reactants. So there we are calculating XL. So 2.21, remember, uh, your XL is equal to two pi FL, which is two pi times the frequency, uh, which is 50 hertz times the inductance. So the inductance 23 milli. And remember from your units, from your engineering signs, the milli means times 10 to the exponent of negative three, All right? If you're given a micro, that's times 10 to the exponent of a negative six, all right? So there it means we have got uh, 23 milli Henry's times 10 to the exponent of minus three. Milli is the same as times 10 to the exponent of negative three. So this is going to give us uh, the inductive reactance, which is uh, going to be 7,226 comma two, two uh, six ohms, that is uh, to three decimal places. You can also uh, fix your calculator to three decimal places so that you just obtain your answers direct. All right, then the capacitive reactance. All right, this one is for the capacitor. As we can see, we have got a capacitor on our circuit. So the capacitive reactance, Again, we have got this from our formula sheet, Xc, which is equal to one over two 
pi fc so we can just have our formula direct if you've forgotten this but you're supposed to just know your formula so this is one over two pi fc all right thus our reactance is equal to one over two pi times the frequency which is 50 times the capacitance and our capacitance that's 52 52 times 10 to the exponent of negative six so if you're using uh your calculators properly just substitute everything use the pi as it is from your calculator this is going to be 61.213 ohms this is a reactance just like resistance it is measured in in ohms all right, that's the first part that we had on the reactants is then the total current. How can we obtain the total current? In order for you to have the total current, remember you need total impedance. You're supposed to have uh, the total impedance. That's 2.23, I'm just gonna calculate it here. So remember that the total current is taken from the voltage over the total impedance, which is the total voltage that you're given uh that is you can have the current from there but now if you are to consider we do not have the total impedance so we are supposed to calculate the total impedance this is a series circuit so we are supposed to check is the reactance of these two reactants which one is bigger so as you can see xc is bigger than xl comparing these two we can see that XC is greater than XL. XC is greater than XL. On a condition that our XC is greater than XL, it follows that the impedance is taken as the square root of R squared plus the bigger minus the smaller one. So it is XC, which is bigger than XL. So that's XC minus XL squared. That is the phase sum that you like the phase, like the way that you calculate your phase sum. So this is the approximation that you're given ZTC in this part. So if it was the opposite that uh, we are like here, XL minus XC, it means XL is greater than XC. But in this case, XC is greater than XL. So it means on the formula is supposed to be XC minus XL. So this formula, it is controlled with which one there is bigger is it xc or is it xl all right so also to note these formulas here if you take all this part going to the resonant uh frequency all right to the all oh, this part here let's okay like this all this part here this is your series circuit we're talking about the series here Yes, this XL does not affect to say is it series or is it uh, uh, for a parallel. But these formulas that we are seeing here, they are based here. These formulas, we are going to apply them in a series. Whereas these uh, other formulas that we are having here are for a parallel. From this one, IR in this case, all these ones are for a parallel when you're dealing with a parallel connections so this is for a parallel okay so you're supposed to know your formula sheet know your formula sheet okay so this is what you're having there so let us just go through and see what we are given so in this case as we so that xc is bigger than xl so you're going to have xc minus xl so do not just use the but in that case let's say you have uh actually like you have not considered this even if you write it as xl minus xc on this formula then you square it does not affect remember the square the square does not affect the square if you are given a square there is gonna uh it's gonna be a positive a negative when being squared it's a positive so even if you have, you have not considered that but it is important that you do understand this meaning here it means you're going to subtract the bigger one minus smaller one so there we've got the resistance from our circuit so that is the square root of the resistance squared 150 squared plus the difference that we have between xc and xl which are the ones that we calculated before remember our xc 
61,213 minus XL, which is 7.226. Uh, so the 7,226. So this part as it is, you square it. So this gives us the total impedance. We are not even asked about this total impedance, but you cannot call, you can't calculate the current without this impedance. So it was going to be 4, 1, 9, 5, and so, so 2, 3. Just more place. If you fix your calculator, it was going to be 4, 2, 0 like this, which is just uh, 4, 2 ohms. Impedance. Without this impedance, you cannot calculate the current because we are seeing is the total voltage over the total impedance. So therefore, you can calculate the total current. From the voltage, the total voltage over the total impedance, we have got the total voltage from our circuit, which is 220, over the total impedance that we calculated of 159,42. So this is going to give you uh, the total current, and that was going to be 1,38023 to three decimal places. So you can even fix your calculator to three decimal places. You obtain exact answers rounded off to three decimal places. That's it. So there was five marks for that. Calculate the total current. All right, then the other part of the question is to calculate the phase angle. And there we've got uh, there is uh, three marks for that. Just to calculate the phase angle, guys. This is a series circuit, like I said. We are dealing with a series. These are the formulas you can even take on a series if you take about the phase angle. This is the best formula that you can actually use. Theta is equal to R cos R over Z. As long as it's a series circuit, that formula is going to work in any series combination. Theta is equal to the arc cos of the resistance over the impede. As long as it's a series circuit, as long as it's a series circuit, this formula is going to work. So that is arc cos of the resistance, which is 150, divided to the impedance, which is our total uh, impedance we got there that was uh, 159.42. There are so many formulas that you can use uh, to calculate this, uh, but that is the direct formula if you are to consider this, because at the end of the day, you are in exam, you are working with the question paper that has got a certain formula sheet, and that is the only assistance that you have, which is your formula sheet. So if you opt for, for, for that to understand your formula sheet is the best because at the end of the day, you're going to be working with the formula sheet. So that arc cost, that is arc cost, which is shift cost uh, 150 over 159,42. Uh, so this will give us the answer, which is 19. And now we're having the current 19,794 and so on. So like I was saying, you even fix your calculator shift set up you fix to six there uh you press six then to three decimal places from zero to three you can press three decimal places you press three so your answer is th to three decimal places that's 19 comma seven nine five 19 comma seven nine five degrees so you can even uh ship uh, like uh fix your calculator to three decimal places so that everything that you're calculating is rounded off to three decimal places. So this is three marks. Just, just to use a formula that you're already given from the formula sheet and substitute. Guys, we can do much better than that. Work with more questions. That's the best that you can do so that you do understand how these typical questions are given. So that's it, guys. Till we meet again.